Welcome to Inside Communications Radio. I'm Mike Bako. Today we're joined by Steve Olinsky. Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Mike. So let's go inside the world of social media and sports. We hear so much now about the integration of everything. And just recently, a week ago on February 12th, an NLL hockey league, a National Lacrosse League, I should say, game between the Philadelphia Wings had the jerseys with the Twitter handles on them. Are we going to be seeing this more, or do you think that this is just a one-shot deal? Uh, that's kind of a hard question. It's kind of a wait and see. I think, Mike, you're gonna you're gonna see. Um, I think you're gonna see teams um, in all professional sports kind of take a look and see um, what, if any, interest and, and uh, engagement levels, uh, increased levels of engagement and interest come from this. Um, I think it's it's a very unique idea for sure. It's a unique idea, but I'm just thinking about today, where we're speaking today on February 17th. If the NFL was doing this at this particular time, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Steven Jackson, the running back for the St. Louis Rams, tweeted out by accident that he needed condoms. Now, this is obviously something that he did not want to have tweeted out, but just thinking about it in the larger context of how athletes now, the, the blurring of the lines between sports athlete personality, potentially having these Twitter integrations, doesn't the league, leagues, organizations need to take a, a better thought process on this in terms of how much information on these athletes do they really want out there? They do, and and I think we're kind of I think we're kind of talking about two different things now. One, one being what the Philadelphia Wings did, which having their Twitter handles on the back, which served theoretically anyway for a way to for, for their fans to follow them and kind of promote their Twitter handles versus what these players are actually tweeting about. So it's it's kind of two different things. Um, but to speak to uh, what kind of obligations the league uh, the leagues have in terms of monitoring and, and uh, you know, putting some guidelines in place. It's, it's a tough call. Obviously, in America, you know, with freedom of speech and everything that, that goes with that, uh, you don't want to kind of uh, put the reins on anybody. Uh, but they're also private employers, so they can, uh, you know, they, they'll have some say on, on what, uh, what their employees, which in essence they are, um, say and tweet about um, about everything. So I know the NFL has guidelines in place. I'm sure the other three professional leagues have have guidelines in place. Of course, guidelines, you know, are guidelines and players kind of uh, go by their own rules sometimes. So it, it's not going to be an exact science, unfortunately, for, for leagues. I think you're going to see uh, a lot of uh, players tweeting and Facebooking and everything else. Uh, some things that the, that the league is kind of going to cringe at and then kind of backpedal to kind of cover from a, like a, a PR standpoint. And you blog about a lot of these things and a lot of things that are going on in social media. You call yourself a social media junkie on stevealinsky.blogspot.com. That's Steve, O-L-E-N-S-K-I, at dot blogspot.com. What other trends do you think that we're going to be seeing? You mentioned the NFL in terms of allowing their players to tweet during the Pro Bowl. Do you think that we're going to be seeing more sports leagues, maybe during the exhibition season, maybe during some of these all-star games, allowing a little bit more of the fan interaction and the integration of some of the social media platforms? Yeah, I I definitely think that's a natural progression. Um, One thing to keep in mind, you mentioned the Pro Bowl, is that the NFL – uh, they had, you know, certain stations set up, computers, and they they were monitoring what was being tweeted out. So there was kind of a big brother presence there. It wasn't like the players were on their cell phones tweeting from the sidelines. Um, so it's a, it's a it's an important distinction to make. But I think for sure you're going to see uh, more and more leagues kind of test the waters, if you will, um, to where it's in the exhibition or perhaps even someone who's uh, during a game but not – not in uniform kind of thing, but they're on a the sideline. So the fans really get that, that true, real-time uh, feeling of what it's like to be in a game. I think those are the kinds of things you're going to see. Do you think that some of that, is, I guess one of the reasons why people like Twitter so much and Facebook so much is that it is almost an instant, unfiltered, I guess, uh, example of what someone's thinking at a specific moment. Do you think that with this filtering of, of a league oversight, do you think that we're going to lose some of the actual benefit to actually having athletes doing that? I think it's going to depend on each league, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, the, one of the running uh, jokes about the NFL is that it stands for the No Fun League. 
you know, with their with their penalties for excessive celebrations and celebrations in the, in the end zone and things like that. Uh, I think it's going to come down to a, to a league by league determination of of how much leeway they're going to give. And I think with the lacrosse league uh, allowing the Twitter handles on the back is is kind of revolutionary. Yeah, they're not one of the big four major sports, but I think it caused the other four to sit up and take notice. And hopefully, at least I think, you know, from a fan's perspective, it'll kind of loosen the reins a little bit and allow for more of that engagement um, from players to, to fans. Because obviously, after all, the fans do ultimately pay their salaries. Do you think that we'll see possibly some of the lesser leagues? As I mentioned, it was the National Lacrosse League that did this. Do you think that maybe some of the up-and-coming leagues, let's say Major League Soccer, some of the women's sports, the leagues that are just trying to get noticed will be doing this faster and quicker than, say, the established four here in North America? Yeah, I do, actually, and that's a great point. I think, um, obviously, those leagues that you just talked about don't have the benefit of multi-million dollar television contracts and advertising revenues and things like that. So they need to come up with these kind of niche, different ways uh, of getting their name out, of getting their brand out, of getting their players out. And I think that's that's you're going to see those kind, of, and maybe even at, at the and I'm going to open a can of worms here, but that you're going to see it at the college level as well, um, where you're, you might see players, you know, tweeting, you know, during a, a college football game or an exhibition college football game, you know, a preseason scrimmage game kind of thing to engage, you know, the students on campus and, of course, their fans around the country. So I definitely think you're going to see the, the lesser-known you know, professional sports do this. Yeah, uh, although I doubt uh, I doubt we'll be seeing that at Ohio State. I think when Urban Meyer took over, he, he tried to install a ban on all sorts of social media for his, for his players. So I'm sure it's going to be a slippery slope as we move forward. You've been listening to Inside Communications Radio. We're pleased to be joined by Steve Olinsky. You can find more information about Steve at Steve Olinsky, O-L-E-N-S-K-I dot blogspot dot com. Steve, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Mike. It was my pleasure.